Hey guys, how's it going, man? This is Papa Joe with uh, this week's second edition of Little Shop Vlogs. Uh, got a, we had the opportunity to feature a special guest while he was in town because homeboy hardly ever gets a break to, <laughs> to stop and smell the flowers. Yeah. Uh, so we asked uh, we asked Manny Lozano, our good friend with the artifact, if he would help us uh, c convince Wu, Mr. Bryce Butler, <laughs> onto our Little Shop project. Yeah. Uh, he's a really humble, hardworking dude. Uh, uh, I don't know, man. He's like somebody you can really look up to, man. But now I'm going to let him go ahead and talk to you guys about everything Bryce Butler. Go ahead and give us a quick intro. Cool, man. Um, so uh, my name is Bryce Butler. I pretty much I started playing drums when I was like... I hate saying this because it, I should be way better than I am. But uh, I started playing drums when I was like three, I guess, technically. Um, all because the the uh, the Eagles were on <laughs> Channel 13 on KERA, and I just like I always just had a knack for rhythm, I guess, because my mom would play on her like on her stomach when I was in the womb, and so <laughs> which I think is pretty cool. So I absorbed that somehow. So when I was three, I saw the Eagles on TV, and I dragged like <laughs> I dragged like these two stools into the living room. And then brought these two uh, wooden spoons and like started, I think the song was Get Over It. And I started like playing along to it and my parents were just like, oh shit. What man, this kid is like keeping beat. Be. Yeah, we're like, man, we should probably get him a drum set soon, you know. And we put a metronome <laughs> in the back. Shit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so, uh, so pretty much from then on, they, you know, my parents like helped me out and supported me and bought me a drum kit at three. And uh, I didn't really, I mean, I didn't really do much from... I played a little bit, but I didn't get serious about it until I was like 15 or so, you know, and then um, got super into Dream Theater big time. That's why I'm like, it's the whole reason I'm like a prog head now, and all I want to do is play odd time signatures and just shred and okay, play too many fills, you know, and then uh, pretty much that turned into like BT Bam and Mastodon and all these other guys, and I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's pretty crazy that I... Never would have, never would have thought I'd be this far. Looking back Dude, as a yeah, kid, it's, you know, it's pretty amazing. You've accomplished a lot at a young age, man. So I don't know. Like I, I see all the things that you're up to, and I kind of think that, like Judy and I always get asked, like, why do you guys do this stuff? Like, why do you guys go to shows and all that? And I always think, you know what? Well, we're trying to do as much as we can while we can, you know. Yeah. Like we're not. I mean, I'm not young anymore. Judy's younger than me. <laughs> she does. <laughs> She's very, very youthful. Well, you're young compared to other people, so. <laughs> but, but I can see the same kind of mindset in you, man. You're just like trying to do as much as you can while you can, and that that's Absolutely. awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, it's better than just sitting around, like your whole life, and not being as productive as you probably could, and not pushing yourself, and then mm -hmm. maybe later on in life thinking. Regrets, should, man. Should have done more, man. It's my biggest fear yeah. is regrets. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, at the end of my life. Okay, so um, were you ever like a band kid? Were you like in drum? Actually, no. Drum yeah, um, I want. I wanted to really bad because I know it would have helped. But I went to this really small school um, called Sunnyvale, and there was like, man, we didn't even band wasn't even like introduced until like sixth grade, and there was like five kids that tried out, and then it it slowly you know got better and developed, but I mean by the time I like I tried it out, like the there was one director and he was like a trumpet player, he didn't really know anything about drumming, so I was just you know what I mean, I was the only person that even knew anything about drums. And then it just never, they never even really had a, it took like, it just took a long time for them to even get a drum line. So I just pretty much self-taught like a YouTube yeah, shit. Man. I you. Yeah, I you. Yeah, it happens a lot with like music teachers. Yeah. They're supposed to like learn, know all the instruments and teach all of them. Mm -hmm. So that's like a, that's a pretty big load there. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so what are some of your like favorite drummers? I know you talked about like Dream Theater mm. being uh, your influence in the Eagles, but mm -hmm. what about your favorite drummers? Like even man. today? Ooh, so... Probably number one favorite drummer right now is Matt Garska from Animals as Leaders. Whenever I feel like I've always loved that band, but whenever he joined the band, I feel like they just like it hit another level, man. Um, that guy, Eric, I like gospel chops a lot. So like Eric Moore, super cool. Tony Royster, super cool. Um, but I mean, like I mentioned before, like Blake Richardson from BT Band was huge, huge influence on me. Even though. <laughs> I got kind of have mixed feelings on Mike Portnoy now, you know, like yeah, he yeah. kind of plays the same He's played the same stuff for like 25 years, you know, yeah, but hey, I mean I, I would not be here right now without him. So, you know, no yeah. nothing but respect, but uh Brand Daler from Mastodon changed my life a lot 
and uh, August Burns Red, that Matt, Matt Griner. There's yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. August Burns Red. And you know the, the best set I've ever seen? <laughs> One of the best sets I've ever seen was August Burns Red at Warped Tour. Really? Which is kind of crazy because that's, that's your next, that's yeah. the next time you to do this, yeah. right? Yeah, actually, like uh, tonight I, I take a bus back to Dallas. I'll get, I'll get back home at 7 a.m., get to sleep for like five or six hours, and then have to go straight to the airport to fly to New York. And then I'll have like two days of practice and then get the, the work tour dates. So, Damn, you'll be playing with Circuit of Suns? Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Man, I've, I've never I've never even been to a Warped Tour. I've never even got to go, so, oh, I'm, so right I'm so honored that I get to do it, you know, before, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. before it's how, over. How did you guys make the connection with Manny? Um, it was actually through JL. Oh, okay. He suggested him, and yeah, cool. I boy. remember him mentioning <laughs> you doing a lot of covers for Villa Maya. Mm. So I was like, he might be the guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool, man. That's cool. That's so awesome. Yeah, so um, I forget about that. And you know, speaking of JL, like I, I, I watch, man. I'm very observant at shows. Mm -hmm. And look, like, when you're on stage, even when the other drummers are on stage, you guys are just like at side stage, like that's all I care about. each other on, cheering mm -hmm. each other on, like you're it's like a family. You guys man. are like, yeah, you guys are family, man. Dude, and, we have a group chat, me and JL, and there's a group chat we have of drummers, and there's like like thirty something drummers in it, and we literally just like hype each other up like That's all awesome. the time and like we'll post anybody will post videos of them chopping or something and you just like you tell them what you like about it yeah, i mean because they're, they're all badass drummers you know so it's yeah. it's cool man and i can tell you guys that the love you guys have is genuine i've, I've seen it man there's like no bullshit no it's real you looking at them like watching jl watching bryce drum and he's over there taking pictures of the video like dude it's like <laughs> It's like your parents are there, like all proud of you. Yeah, dude. It, yeah, I literally feel like I'm watching like my dad and shit. It's like, it's so that's why you call all the drummers your dad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, and JL does the same thing. It's yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's this whole thing. Yeah. It's just respect, man. You know, I get it, man. Yeah. and like, and moshing it is you know whatever to me. But like, I'm I'm there not only to support, but it's just I just want to learn. That's all I want to do. And you can learn literally even from a beginner drummer. You could you could learn something. You know what I mean? Engagement. Everyone's unique, so it's just it's so cool that you can support and learn at the same time, you know. Yeah, we always we always repeat that on our vlog. It's always support for support, man. Yeah. Don't you know, so people important. support you but also support back. It's I I am a huge firm believer in like I well I, I struggle with like I feel like I don't deserve most things or anything. But especially I, I there's no way I should get support or that I deserve support unless I'm giving it, you know. Well you're gonna get it dude, because I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen so it person you get. Yeah, it. And I, it's awesome. Man. I'm, I'm blown away, man. Like yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> so this is usually a segment where I ask uh, ask musicians about their original music, but like where do we start, dude? <laughs> <laughs> man, I don't know. I think like you your your length the length of bands the list of bands that you play with is pretty lengthy. Yeah. I didn't know you played with 2x4, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I was in, I yeah. in 2x4 the last year that they were a band. Yeah, it was, nice. it was Seeker. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. I joined, like, right as soon as I did my... I got to do my first Canada tour with 2x4. It was actually their last tour. And then as soon as we came home from that, I got a message from Bryce from Seeker. And he hit me up, and then... Yeah, now that, cool, yeah, man. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I remember we, I saw 2x4, like, in... Oh, man, it was about... 2012. Wow. At the last, uh, yeah. remember that Unsolid Night in Dallas? Yes. Yeah. They had like a hangar and there were like three stages and then uh, uh, there was also like an outside stage. Yeah. yeah man. That, that was a Dude, good show, that's man. sick. That yeah, was You know, it's crazy because we went, we drove to Dallas to see our friends in Adestria mm -hmm. and I was just blown away by the number of Dallas bands there were, man. Like yeah. a lot of them. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. Like uh, Cameras Don't Lie. Yeah. Was, there were a lot of man, DFW, really good Dallas based I'm, bands. Dude, I'm telling you right now, like, from from touring like from getting to do what i've gotten to do at least and like so thankful like i'm telling you man from my experience dfw music scene like talent wise is like top five in the united states i believe it man I've and seen it's, it. it's crazy yeah it's so crazy. and we got to go to show at uh trees yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's it's a different scene, man. Yeah, it like really is. A lot of kids there, a lot yeah. of support, and yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how else to put it, but you gotta see it. You gotta go there, catch a show in Dallas if you ever get a chance, man. It, yeah, definitely. It, it's something something to see, and not just that. But also, like when they have, uh, I know they still have uh, the South by So What there in the in the Deep Ellum area. Yeah, yeah, they started doing yeah, it. Yeah, we've been yeah. there. Uh, we went to a show there one time to watch one of our favorite bands there at the Santa Vermin Hall. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we went to eat at that serious pizza. Oh wow. And that place pizzas, was like dude. 
full of nothing but musicians who are yeah. there for the South by So What. Yeah. And it's really cool, man. I mean, yeah, it's really awesome, man. It's, it's like they cool all place. just like congregate and kick ass. Mm. So, okay, so like, uh, you can briefly list some of the bands that you've recorded, recorded for. Um, okay, well, so I'm in, I guess I'm in 12 bands right now, I guess technically. Um, if that doesn't really include session work, I guess either. But just like releases I've been on. Yeah. Um, so my first one, uh, my band called Lizard Professor released our debut album in uh, September of 2016. I have another band called Valiant Crusade. We've put out two EPs. Uh, I have another band called Breaker that's put out one. Um, another band called Entombment that's put out one. And actually put out an album with this guy right here. I Artifact album, super cool. Got to do drums on that, that was fucking awesome. And then actually, uh, ironically, so 2x4 changed their name to Frost Coffin. And I did the drums for that EP. Oh, and that, that actually came out in February. So uh, I think one, two, three, four, five, six. So seven now that have come out. Nice. But I'm projected by the end of 2019, I should be on 23 releases. Hopefully. Wow, dude. Hopefully. Well, spreading the seeds, man. <laughs> yeah, trying, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to get out there, bro. That's, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally get that concept, man. Yeah. Do it, dude. You're young. Do all you can, man. Absolutely. You gotta look back when you're my age and think, you know, I kicked a lot of ass. Yeah, I just wanted to say <laughs> that I lived. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Cool, man. Yeah. Uh, I know, and I know Manny has another project, right? Yes. Other than Artifact. Yeah, it's a black metal project called Hun Hao Mid Nal with Marco Petrozelli. Yeah, actually, yeah, Lord, Mo Lord Marco on drums is like yeah. legendary, man. He's a legendary. It, it, it's crazy, though, because I, I remember hearing that first track you released, and just the drums are insane. <laughs> How do you even do that? It's insane. This is too much. There's no, there's no, he's dude. There's no like. He asked me. He, he asked me last night. He was like, "You think I could do that?" I was like, "He's like, you think you could do that?" I was like, "Bro, there's no." I'm like, "That's some robot stuff." No, no like, shit. 300 BPM. I was like, "No way." Yeah, that's crazy. Incredible. Man. Yeah. Okay, Super so cool. uh, talk to us about your writing style. Like, let's say uh, somebody presents you like with a very bare foundation of a song. Like, what's your mindset going into it? So, I was actually talking to him about this earlier. My, the main thing I want to do is. I just want to make them happy and have their vision come to life. So I'll make sure if there's any specific parts that they have a, a specific drum feel that they want, I'll have them tell me and then I'll try to match that as best I can. And I, I have them tell me like what their vision is for how they want it to sound, how they want it to feel, where they were at when they wrote it. Like I like to really get emotionally involved. Like just, I'm just a very emotional person. I like to get really emotionally involved in the process. So I'll f figure all of that out. And then basically try to, I, I play too technical usually by nature. So I have to try to do, then I, then I basically figure out, okay, what can I do that sounds cool that's not only sounds cool, that's fun to play, that I won't get bored playing, but that also doesn't overshadow right. know, anybody else. Right. Sometimes you have to kind of like tailor it yeah, to absolutely. What the, the sound that they're looking for, right? Yeah. yeah sometimes you got to hold back and it's so hard for yeah, me, man, that, but yeah. Yeah, because sometimes you just want to fucking go in and tear yeah, it up. Yeah, sometimes right. you just want to show <laughs> off, but yeah. yeah. And, and I know you also do, like, you offer lessons, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, do you do those like while you're on, on tour or while you're home? Because um, so I, can, so I can understand when you have time to be home. Well, that yeah. Recently, thankfully, I don't. I, I, well, it's pretty cool to be this busy. I'm so grateful. But normally, when I, anytime I am home in between tours, I'll do um, lessons at home, um, like DFW area. Uh, I definitely do. Anytime I'll go on like any bigger tours, um, I'll try to offer lessons. Um, the main thing I need to do uh, is definitely I need to get in the Skype game. Like when I get back. Um, from the Abigail tour at the end of September, I'm gonna invest in a, a webcam and set up the whole Skype thing and then start doing the Skype game so I can get, cause I know I can't just limit myself to yeah. just my area. So. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, I, I've seen that where a lot of musicians offer the lessons via Skype. Yeah, yeah. Which I can imagine would open up a lot more opportunities for you. Mm -hmm. That's great, man. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, so like what's uh, some, of, in, in your opinion, what's some of the must have gear that drummers should have? Oh man. Um, I think local drummer. For me, like, 
I would say people will give me shit on this. I think like I think it's cool to have at least like one splash and like one stack on your kit. I don't know, just because I'm 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 all about accents, doing cool accents and accenting music in a cool way, and. Even just having one or two of those things, man, can add like so many different elements to the music and so many different things. Um, also, I'll get you know flack on this from like older people, but I think like it's pretty like cliche and metal. But having a double pedal is super cool. I think you should start off with a single pedal, but you can do some really cool stuff with a double pedal. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you did mention like the eagles that. <laughs> You like you you just stumble upon it right when you were a kid. But what did you listen to as a kid? Um, <laughs> so pretty much all that I can really remember is it was like fifty fifty because I have one sister, and so my dad basically raised me on like classic rock. So like you know like Led Zeppelin and anything anything like that, Queen, Pink Floyd, all that, which is sick. And then basically like all my sister's music. So like. Britney Spears and like In Sync and yeah, like no Backstreet, that, dude. dude. I'm all, I'm still all, all day. I'm still all about dude, it, dude. I took my kid to watch In Sync. He was like six years old, and I was probably the one cheering the most <laughs> in the stadium. Dude, I, like like yesterday in the bathroom, I had like a Backstreet Boys stuck in my head. Like pretty much one of my like dream gigs is to like basically like play drums for Justin Timberlake. Like oh, yeah, I'm all yeah. about. I I think there should be like no limit. You know what I mean? Just no. like what you like, man. Don't discriminate on people for that totally, shit. Totally good. <laughs> cool. So to, now it's time for the show off segment. But today we're gonna do a amped up version of the show off segment because we're gonna have Mr. Bryce talk to us about shows. Like he's gonna humble us. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, sweet. Because like last year, like I always said, Judy and I went over to 100 shows last year. How many shows do you think you were at last year? Um, last year did I play? Or was as I, a fan or as a musician? Damn. I know I played at least 100 shows last year. So, probably like 150, maybe? Amped up version of the show. Like, <laughs> You're so sweet, man. <laughs> okay, man, so like, where have, where, where have you played? Like, which cities and venues? Oh, and, man. Oh. I, don't, I don't want to, like, expect you to list all of them, but like, so, where's the one that stand out? I'm thankful enough to have been able to play the, the 48, like, main states. That are the easy ones to get to. Um, man, it's so hard. It's I feel lame because I'm gonna kind of say the kind of the classic ones, but I love love Portland. Um, I love Colorado a lot. Um, California's pretty cool. Um, and then, dude, Canada is like my place. Yeah. It, is, it is just dude. My my son was in Canada like a month ago for uh, like a summer camp, mm -hmm. and he told me he's like, dude, I want to move here. Dude, it <laughs> it is it's so sick because like the stereotypes, it, like everyone is like nicer, everyone's like prettier somehow. <laughs> like it's that's, just those, that's, it's so cool, man. Those are the same things he told me. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> it's um, like people are at a park and <clears throat> doing things that are questionably, un, you know, unlawful may or may not be. Yeah, exactly. That involve a lighter and blazing up. Yeah, exactly. With uh, it's law awesome. enforcement. It's awesome there. Close by, yeah. not doing anything about it. They don't care. It's not even legal there yet. Yeah. But the way he said that, as long as you're not being a fuck up, mm -hmm. they're cool with it. Yeah, they're totally cool. They're just everyone's like way more respectful. Could you imagine that that mindset here? No way. It would be amazing. I would love. I would love that. And honestly, it's, like more progressive. It's kind of like that. I mean, it it varies like in Europe and stuff. But so. I've gotten to play Canada like I think like maybe five times now, but I've also gotten to do uh, the UK now, um, Scotland. Uh, I think in in the, on the Europe tour in in February, I think we did like twelve countries. I think um, so. I really like Slovenia is an incredible place. The Netherlands is probably one of my favorite places in the world that I've ever been. Um, Ireland is gorgeous. Scotland is gorgeous. And it's hard, man. It's just, there's just, you just gotta get out there and like, if you can, if you've got time, you know, like, I would just recommend it because it is just dude, the most beautiful thing ever. Dude, yeah. that's like the most blown away. <laughs> We've been here with a, with a simple little question. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That's, that's cool, so dude. No, that's awesome, man. 
Dude, I'm so proud of you, man. Thank uh, you, man. I really appreciate I that. I just always remember, like, when I think of it, I just remember how supportive you are, dude. And, and I hope that you get the same support back, man. Thank you. I, I feel, dude, I'm man. honestly, like, overwhelmed with people's, like, love and support yeah. recently. I get it, man. It's, I mean, you're always unreal. so positive, and that's amazing, man. That We need a lot more of that. <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, so, like, okay, so what are some places you would like to connect that you haven't yet? Ooh, man. Okay. I'm very, very honored and blessed to say that I will be getting to play Japan in November, which was a huge bucket list for me. The only, the the big, the only other bucket list I had in the past that is up there is I want to play Australia like so bad because I have so many Australian friends and they're like some of my favorite people ever. Um, and then like something crazy like like. Uh, I had a friend play like Iceland, and so that to me just sounds like on a real sick. I can imagine. So anything, any, any crazy thing like that. Honestly, like one of my ultimate goals is to is to play like all seven continents. I know that's insane. It's like super far fetched, but you never know. You could dream. I mean, Metallica's done it. I yeah. guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Not like I'm like one millionth of what Metallica has is. <laughs> <laughs> cool. uh, so like what are some things that you see at shows that make you happy oh man just like genuine support mm -hmm. like genuine like love and support like um people hug like people hugging each other like not being afraid to hug each other at shows like like uh kind of like what you were talking about earlier with um man like the drummer community of like you know whether I'm playing or or not. Like if, if I'm if I'm playing, there's five drummers on stage watching me. Or if, if I'm on stage, I've got like four or five of my drummer buddies watching, and we're all cheering. You know what I mean? It's just the genuine support and and love of music, and appreciation of we're all here for the same reason because we love this, and we are grateful that we get to express. We have the freedom to express this, you know, and get to enjoy this. I think it's just like beautiful, man. Yeah, and, and I don't know how long that's been, that's been happening with drummers, but I've seen that lately a lot. Where a lot of times the drummers, are, like especially with the younger ones, mm -hmm. there's some that like sit right there next to you where you're playing and yeah. just watching. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. I, I feel mean, like there's been a. I think you're right. I feel like there's been more of a movement like lately. I think so too. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I think it's so cool. Where are some of the some of the your favorite bands that you've opened up for, and who do you want to open up? for? Actually, you can't say Meshuggah though. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the, so. Definitely, my favorite ones that I have opened up for, are I actually have like a, I have like a list of goals in my wallet, uh, on sticky notes of things that I want to accomplish, and some of them are like tour with Meshuggah, tour with Periphery, and tour with Animals as Leaders. Thankfully, I've gotten to open for Periphery and Animals as Leaders like three times each, which... It's like one step closer, dude. Unre yeah, I'm like blown away that that's even got to happen. But I've only got to see Mushuga, so it is like pretty much my biggest dream to get to open for Mushuga or to like tour with them. Like, because that's, for me, that's like number one band, favorite band for me. So that's <laughs> like nothing, I think, if I could do that, dude... Or just even meet him, I'll probably faint. So <laughs> dude, the, the day it happens, I'm not gonna be surprised, man. <laughs> man I can't. I'll I'll be fanboying so hard, dude. It's, I I'm, I will always be a fanboy at heart. Like it's anytime I meet anyone that's like famous or cool that I look up to, it's just I can't stop smiling or like it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's just uh, you're human, dude. Mm -hmm. And also you're humble, so that that says a lot. Man. Thank you. I try so hard, oh. dude. <laughs> Are you taking lessons with anybody? Uh, no, yeah. you know, I, sh I really should, because I've never, I've never taken lessons, I'm completely, I'm like completely self-taught, just except for like YouTube, but, um, I've taken like, I've taken like one lesson with like Blake Richardson from BT Bam, and actually, that was at a South by So What, and he had actually watched my, I actually cried, because he watched my set, like I asked him to watch my set, and he actually did it, and I like, was so grateful that I cried, um, but uh, I probably should take lessons, so I would be not a shot. But probably in the future, if if I can yeah. if I can find like a cool, I would like I would, if I had a, a person to choose from, I would like to choose like from Matt Garska or somebody. He's like the grownest to me. Like, like, <laughs> like the grownest. The grownest man. <laughs> How did that whole grown thing get started? 
<laughs> Actually, that's like a really funny story. I was coming home from work one day, like back when I had to work a normal job, which is, I'm even so honored and humbled that I can even say that. But I was coming home like on 6.35 or something, and I was following this like cutlass that was like baby blue, like baby blue powdered powdered rims and everything. And like from super far away, I saw like this big like white like sticker on the back window and I pulled up closer dude and it was literally like an outline of a dude like of a, of a jacked dude going like this and it just said grown man on the back of this car <laughs> and I like I almost wrecked because I was crying I was like crying <laughs> laughing so hard and from like pretty much then on dude I just started calling people like a grown man and I mean there's there's like a bunch of rap songs and like I mean it's people have been saying grown man for like yeah, a yeah. little while but it kind of I kind of started saying it and then other people think it's funny so that yeah. it catches on and now all the drummers and everybody we call each other grown like grown men and yeah. grown and grown yeah, it makes that sense <laughs> stupid <That's cool>. yeah. <laughs> so awesome cool okay so now we're gonna go ahead and talk about your social media talk to us about where people can find you cool so um I have I've pretty much only used two things really. I use just Facebook and Instagram. Uh, my Instagram name is just Bryce Butler Drums, uh, and then my Facebook I think is just like Bryce Butler Two or something. Um, if you just type in Bryce Butler, it's the picture of the kid cheesing super hard, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> What's uh, the most reliable way to get a hold of you? Um, either either one, but probably like Facebook Messenger would Messenger. probably be probably the best one. Cool. Yeah. I try. I probably check that the most often. <laughs> Um, is there any advice that you'd give some of the younger musicians, some of the guys that are eager to get good, get fast? Yeah. Um, man, that's good. Uh, patience, I think, is number one, which is obviously easier said than done. Um, I think, man, the most important thing that I've learned recently, not even just like about musicians or drumming, but just like in life, is, dude, just just be yourself like the most i think the most important thing you can do as a person or as a musician is to just be yourself and embrace who you are and go with that um if you have a dream or a goal and there's something that you keep thinking about and keep dreaming about that you want to do and it's it's in the pit of your stomach and you like can't stop thinking about it i all i can tell you is literally chase that every day with like every fiber of your being and you will be happy you'll pretty much get where you want to be um it's hard things get hard life gets tough um but if if you stick it out i swear to you i promise you it will be worth it it will all be worth it um and i think a couple more things real quick um try not to make it much of a competition because there's always going to be people better than you music is super subjective um the most important thing I think you can do at, maybe as a musician also is along the lines of be yourself is develop your own style. You know, don't try to play exactly what this person's playing or copy. Just, you know, try to maybe take a little of what you like from everybody else and put it together and just make it you. And if you do that and you believe in yourself and you, and you have that passion and you go after it, people will basically have no choice. Well, also key, be a good person, be honest, be good to other people. And if you do those things, people will basically have no choice but to respect you. And I, good things will happen. I kind of like that killing with kindness. Absolutely, bro. absolutely, nice. I love that. Yeah. yeah, people are really quick to hate back when they get hate nowadays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah it, it's always hard to like keep that part of yourself in check. Yeah, definitely. Ego is a big problem, man. And I can tell you like, even as you get older, like. Mature, you can get mature, but you, there's still that little piece of you that's like, ah, oh, well, mm -hmm. fuck, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know gotta, what I mean? Yeah, you got to keep you it in check. Keep and that it's, in check it's hard, and yeah. yeah. Okay, Absolutely. Cool. So are there any, like, hidden or secret talents of, that you have, like, away from music when you get a, when you get a break? <laughs> or maybe, like, if you're on the road touring? I'll put it, I'll put it this way. I'm basically terrible at everything in life, except I didn't really, I always got, like, bullied growing up, and I didn't really have very many friends. So I had a lot of free time in school. So I spent, I developed making these really weird noises. So I can do these like, I can like whisk like. <laughs> I can do like weird bird calls. I can like whistle with my mouth open. It's like cre weird creepy shit. Behind you. Like that nobody should be able to do, you know, weird things. 
I can do a robot voice like uh, <coughs> zero one one seven six five. I, 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 just weird, stupid shit that no one should be able to do, you know? Awesome to be, but, and then, like, <laughs> act, like, accents are, like, I like, like, doing, like, like, British accents, right? So, like, it's, like, one of my favorite things to do, you know, like, totally take, like, you know, like, different characters or something, you know? You sound like Bruce Dickinson. That's cool, that's <laughs> awesome, but yeah, that, I mean, pretty much, I just like to be silly. It's funny, because you know? my daughter and I used to do that a lot with each other, right? I love that, I, yeah, I love the that. The British accent. Yeah, I just like to be oh, silly, yeah, that's, that's, awesome. that's pretty much it. That robot voice. Like, yeah, <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, that's so ridiculous. Cool. Ah, big question. So, what do you, what do you think about the whole cyberbullying, mm. um, keyboard warriors? How do, you, how do you let that not get to you? What advice oh, do you man. have? Oh, you know, we were so talking hard. about it earlier with the whole bro job thing, and mm. it seems like those guys get quite a bit of hate, but they have mm. some pretty brilliant answers. Yeah, they do. And they're pretty fucking brutal, too. Bro job yeah. is nothing to bully. What the hell? My favorite, and yeah, it's exactly That's what we're hilarious. talking about, and it's exactly what you just said, man. The number one thing that you can do to those people is to kill them with kindness, dude. Literally, the thing that makes them the most mad is to just be sweet to them, and it just... it destroys them like their brains like they don't know what to do and there's nothing that they can say they, they basically like can k try to keep insulting you but if you just don't let it if you just brush it off you're like cool man i love you you know they're like damn what else do i say you know what i mean it's i hate it you know it's it's wrong i i, I hate bullying and i think if you see it i think you should absolutely stand up to it and whether it's cyber or in person um but I think it's important to know that it's it's gonna happen. There's always gonna be people. There's always gonna be haters. There's always gonna be trolls online and stuff. Yeah. Just just remember that at the end of the day, if you're getting like cyber bullied or something, you can you can literally just turn your computer off and then it's it's not an issue anymore. You know what it I mean? Just, it doesn't just exist anymore. Sometimes it's it's hard to not let it get to you. But at the end of the day, if you just try to be positive and just be sweet to them, you win. Right. So. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so uh, real quickly here, talk to us about any endorsements you may have, because I know you've got a couple. Cool. Um, yeah, I did. I, I'm well, I'm like so honored and grateful to even be able to say that I even have one. Um, but I have I actually just picked up my second one. Uh, I picked up a pedal endorsement actually in Austria. The the company is called ACD Unlimited. Um, super cool. Um, the guy's name is Dennis. Like an amazing pedals, best customer service ever. Um, came out, like actually came out to a show in Austria like brought the pedals for me to try I like tried them during the it was just like unreal um and then the other company I just picked up a like a, a clothing endorsement company from Blackcraft Cult which is super cool like they I, I love all I wear is black so they do some really cool uh some really cool clothing so I'm just super honored that you know anybody wants to be involved with me or help me at all so super yeah, yeah, cool I'm man. sure that's like it's a it's a big compliment and kind of flattering that people Super. want to put your name on their product. Dude, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm blown away, man. I'll always be so grateful. Yeah, cool. it's super cool. And if anybody wants to put my name on, like, your beard products, like, hit me up, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> but for any, anything drum-related, hit up Bryce Butler, man. Please. He'll do you proud. <laughs> I will do my best. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now it's time for the rapid fire. Yeah. We're going to go worldwide with this one. Okay, so... Talk to us about this old blast fast eat ass movement. <laughs> <laughs> and how do I get a t-shirt? Oh man, dude, I can totally, I can, I can ship you one. I have a, I have a, uh, I have a big cartel uh, store. Oh, cool. um, I think it's just uh, Bryce Butler um, dot big cartel dot com. Um, man, they're like they're twenty bucks. If I mean, if you don't want to like order order one, I'll, next time I'm down here, I'll totally I'll totally bring you one because you're awesome. It's gonna um, be a two X because it's a big ass. No worries, dude. No worries. I got you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I'm a huge I'm a huge advocate for for ass and ass eating. I think it's sick. So I I, I was like ta always talked about it for a while, and there was some point when I just kind of put I just kind of like put the two together and figured, man, it would be sick if if I could do some sort of like gimmick thing to where I put like blast beats and and I had a friend actually what what gave me kind of the the spark idea I had a friend like have me um, autograph which is so sweet I had a, asked me to like autograph a drum head and he told me he was like yo can you specifically make it say blast beats and ass eats and I was like oh 
I was like, that's kind of genius. And so I just kind of like, yeah, I kind of put a little spin on that and then eventually came up with Blast Bass Eat Ass. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. So cool. ridiculous, okay. man. Second question. Mm-hmm. Define bro job. Like, how did you guys come up with a name? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I actually, um, I just joined, you know, not super long ago. Uh, I'm not, I'm not super sure how they came up with it, but the, uh, the whole concept is just genius. I think it's just, it's basically just like sick music with, with, it is, man. It's with like, joke, like the music is incredible, man. I like really, it's like Mashuga and Vildyarda and stuff, like yep. super cool. But the joke, like the lyrics are like you know, like like gay joke lyrics about like sucking dick it's and like, like teeny yeah, it's, yeah. There's this t- song called Teeny Weenie and like just hilarious stuff, man. But the reason I'm like so grateful to be a part of that group is, you know, a lot of people think it's a joke, but. Dude, they're so they're such all great dudes, and they're so supportive of everything, and they're so supportive of like the actual gay community, and we have like so many fans that are actually gay, and like, just, I mean, dude, it's one of the coolest fan bases I've ever like. It's it's a fan base that you can literally like feel the love. You know what I mean? So it's I get you, man. It's cool that it's it's got some like joke elements, but I you know I love that it's like wholesome. Yeah. Know, so <laughs> okay, so you did mention earlier that you're getting ready to hop on a bus to back to Dallas. Mm-hmm. And like when you, before you do that, how do you handle? Being, how do you prepare like for buses and farts? <laughs> Actually, on the way over here, I totally had. On the way over here, I totally had this like scare because I was like at the back of the bus, and like there it was like a full bus, man, and I had to fart so bad. And I was just like, man, do I, how do I do that? How do I go about this? Like, <laughs> is this going to be loud? Is it going to smell? And so <laughs> I just didn't really know what to do. So I was like, man, do I just like cough and do this? Eventually, I pretty much <laughs> I just pretty much tried to like low and slow, like <laughs> push it out like as slow as I could safely. And uh, I mean, I got out clean, you know, but... <laughs> Well done, man. That's well ridiculous, done. man. It's, it's a dangerous game, I'll tell you that, man. <laughs> okay, speaking of that, <laughs> talk to us about your favorite El Paso food. Oh, man. oh we gotta go to Chivas Tacos in a little bit, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's gotta, yeah, it's gotta be the tacos, man. Fuck yeah. It's just right there yeah, with you, man. too good, dude. Too good. You gotta go to a place in, in Horizon called Tacos Charlie. Take them there, man. Ah, Please, okay. put dude. me up. I don't mean knowing about all that. <laughs> Okay, so you've been you've been all over the USA, mm-hmm. the West Coast or East Coast? Uh, both. I've been so I've I've played every single like state except Hawaii and Alaska, and those are like the two that I'm like. Gotta get there. That's the, those are the two that I want to get because it would be it would be so huge for me to say I've played like. Literally every, you know. Don't forget Puerto Rico too, man. Yeah. Oh man. We Seeker was actually supposed to play a couple shows there, and something happened. So you, I got to make that happen. Cool. Cause that's that would, that would really. That's <laughs> okay, awesome. man. So that's like all the questions we have for you, man. I want to thank awesome. you for blessing us with your presence here at the metal shop. <laughs> man, thank you guys. It's an honor. It's, an, um, it's my it's my honor, man. Completely. And also, thank you to Manny for yeah, dude, thank helping you so us much. get this together. Uh, and you. now's your chance to talk about anything you want to talk about or give your shoutouts. Uh. I definitely just got, I just definitely wow hold on I gotta pull up this little list real quick because I I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel bad if I if I don't do this wrong I'm gonna give like a shout out to like all my fans real quick basically um, I love all of you and I would not be anywhere without you I wouldn't have a job or a house to live in or food so uh, Abigail Williams Aeolia Bro Job uh, Breaker Circuit of Sons. Day of Meth, Entombment, Lizard Professor, Nociceptor, Proto Futurist, Seeker, Silver Cord, uh, Valiant Crusade. Also, um, huge shout out to Manny. Thank you for, for everything he does for me. Uh, I Artifact stuff. Um, uh, the guys in Limerence, I uh, did some session work for them. <laughs> um, basically, anyone that's ever hired me for anything ever, anyone that's ever said any nice thing or supported me in any way i'm forever in debt and grateful to you my mom and dad and uh all my friends and my wonderful girlfriend i don't know i don't know where i would be without you guys and i mean you 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 too man like i'm it's so weird to me and such an honor that anyone even like you know wants to ask me any questions or you know so this is super cool man thank you guys so much it's our, it's our pleasure dude i mean 
Next time you're in town, hit us up, man. We'll do. Take good care of you. Yeah, totally. Uh, as always, I want to. Are you done with? Yeah, your yeah, I'm totally done. Yeah. yeah and as always, I want to shout out our awesome and amazing sponsors at Alive Audio. We love you guys, and <laughs> the very obligatory shout out to Mama Judy because yeah. we couldn't do this without, without her and her <laughs> awesome skills. Yes. Um, she's like a wizard behind the camera, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, shout out to many and the cool dudes in the artifact. They've always been really supportive of us, and Absolutely. love you guys. So, that being said. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week on the Mail Shop Vlogs. Thank you. Love you guys. <laughs>